I'm here with uh, Alex Leon. Uh, I think it's a quite an interesting circumstance how uh, we we met as I was watching his videos years and years uh, ago, and uh, now suddenly he appeared uh, in my comment section, and I'm very excited to to get into all the topics that I usually talk about. Um, so, how about you uh, give us a quick little intro about uh, yourself and what you're doing? Thank you, Roel. Um... How do I say your name, by the way? Rule? It's like rule, basically. Rule. Rule number one. Learn the name. Exactly. Exactly. That's <laughs> it. That's it. Um, my name is Alex. I'm from Austria. Uh, grew up in the rural areas of Austria, countryside, cows and all, like the cliche goes. Um, was always into technology, engineering, did a technical high school uh, in my teens. And then realized, damn, I'm I'm really unable to talk to women, <laughs> um, and that that's not fun. Uh, I'm a good engineer potentially one day. I'm maybe a, become a programmer or I don't know, circuit board designer. Or I don't know, whatever. And but what's the point of having a great job and the high income if you cannot manifest beautiful relationships in your life? And I decided to start working for back then my mentor or still mentor, James Marshall from the Natural Lifestyles, uh, offered my time and hustle for his coaching and support. And that worked out really well because I worked my ass off for him for a couple of years and then started coaching inside the company. And now we're here. That's as short as I can do it. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Uh how did you like is that transition is is what really interests me um as i'm that's the main point with my clients as well how are you going to facilitate that transition um so can you tell me a little bit about how you did that and what your plan was and like, was it hard to fix that because you're basically leaving the 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 matrix or the nine to five how do you want to call it yeah um let's say like this I would call it phase one, two, and three. And phase one is, well, let maybe even phase zero. Let's say phase zero, one, two, three. Phase zero is when you're not even aware of the problem, which I think most people are in, right? Like if you're not aware that you are even able to talk to girls on the street, that you're able to improve yourself as a man, that you would actually... You know, that, that it is in your power to do something about your life. It's kind of like ignorance is bliss stage. So it's actually a more happy stage than stage one, which is you realize, damn, there's dudes out there who actually escaped the matrix, who did something about their life, who, you know, make five times more money than I do, even though they work less and they're chilling in Bali. Um, and then there's a hot girl at the coffee shop and I could talk to her, but I don't know how to, I'm really shy. Uh, it takes too much courage, da, da, da. So I was in phase one in my early twenties and that's kind of the most brutal phase because you, you know, there's some other thing, you know, there's like another side to this life, but you don't really know how to get there. Uh, which is a painful realization, a painful situation to be in. And I tried to get out of it, right? I tried to be more social. I tried to go out more. I tried to push myself, uh, talk to people. I even downloaded some like audio guides, like how to approach, how to overcome social anxiety. I, w I walked in Vienna. I, I tried to give compliments to people and I just couldn't. It was too hard. Like, to be honest, because I, I, yeah, as I said, my background, like Austrian, you know, don't, don't step too much out of your box. And that was really ingrained in me. And then phase two started for me when I started working for the natural lifestyles, not because, you know, I got the expert coaching or, uh, you know, James taught me every day. I mean, he's a busy guy. It was, I was surrounded by guys who are basically in stage three, which is, it was normal for them. So um, it gave me permission to approach. It gave me permission to be different, to be myself, to say hi to a girl, to be direct. Uh, and that's when it really started becoming easier, fun, enjoyable. I made progress. I didn't give so much of a fuck anymore. 
don't know if I can curse on this, <laughs> um, of what people think. And all that took a few years. You know, I don't want to like sell anyone the idea of you can totally overcome your social anxiety or like your resistance to approach women or to, to make more out of your life within 30 days. But you can do the first step, which is find a support group. Right, right. I want to take this in five directions at once, but yeah. I guess let's start at um, how do how does the communication work? Because you took you took the the mentorship route, which I, I think an amazing choice to yeah. to basically appeal to someone who is already right in that closer circle. And um, basically, slowly you get pulled into that one, and then they start uh, the momentum starts running. Right? How did you? Um, how did you do that, basically? How did you approach uh, James and how did that work? That's a great question because I think there's a lot of misconception around that. Um, I'm now getting a lot of messages of guys who are like, I want to work for you. I would work for you for free. Uh, you know, and even if I respond, which I try, but it's not always possible. And I'm like, okay, what would you solve for me, you know? And they're just like, whatever you need. And I'm like, okay, now some guy is telling me that I need to come up with a problem. And then I need to explain him how to solve that problem. And then hopefully he gets it. And hopefully he solves that problem. And then I have to check if he solved that problem. So now I'm having like four more jobs by having somebody work for me for free. So it's not really saving me anything. It's saving me maybe a little bit of money. But money is just one currency, right? And I would rather spend money on a person who gets the problem and knows how to solve it quickly than having someone fail four times and maybe the, I don't know, I, I, trial and error, you know? So I understood that intuitively early on. I saw the problems James had back then, which were his website looked really shitty. Uh, videos were coming out super Ill irregularly. You know, they upload it sometimes three times a week and then nothing for a month. So it was clear that there is not really a system in the background. Um, in general, animations, editing, audio could need some work. The photos on the website were fucking old. So I knew I can clean up a lot. I can apply my systems thinking and my understanding for photography, video, web design. And that's what I did. And I didn't say, hey, I, I, can I work for you or can I do this? I'm like, look, here's the three things I would change first. And here's how I sh would solve them. And actually, I already made a draft of the first one, for example, right? Like, here's a draft of how the website should look like. And do you want me to implement? And then all it needs is like, yes, and then I do it. So way more easier for the guy. People don't understand how busy people in leadership positions already are. Yeah, very interesting point, because uh, from all the messages I receive as well, uh, the only ones that I even respond to are are the ones exactly as you pose it, right? Um, the people that are very aware of what you're dealing with, and even mm -hmm. including like a little sentence such as, you only have to respond yes if you're interested in me doing the first yeah, prototype or whatever. Good. Like that's that's someone who shows that he understands your position. And uh, frankly, those are the only ones uh, you and I would react to. Um, I think that's a very Im important point. Um, did you have to push that or did you get a response fairly quickly from James? Uh, not at all. I had to push, I think, over a time frame of two months through three different email addresses and then sending it to him, sending it to his assistant and opting in for the contact form on the website, which I think his Serbian assistant is, is overviewing. So yeah, I, I attacked from all angles. Yeah. Yeah. And just for the, the people who don't know, and I, I definitely urge everyone who's viewing this video to check out the natural lifestyles. They, they made a huge impact on my life. And I think it's, uh, predominantly the influence I have, I've had on dating and relationships, it comes from them. Uh, so I definitely urge you guys to check it out. Um, what did you like about the natural lifestyles? Uh, because you clearly knew uh, you were very determined to reach out to them and you really wanted to work for them. Why, basically? 
Um, basically, as I got more into like pickup, right? Often the route starts at reading the game or finding certain videos on YouTube. And there's this initial excitement of, oh, cool. There's people who like figured out some formula of what you can do to get a girl's attention and maybe get a kiss, kiss close, K close <laughs> out of her. Um, and that's fun, right? It's kind of like discovering this new video game, but pretty quickly understood. All right. It first of all has its limitations because the game was written for a very certain type of culture, certain type of girls, right? It was like written for the LA nightclub scene in this particular year or decade for this particular type of girl. And that can work with some girls, but often just doesn't with others from that side. And it works with a certain person, which is extroverted guy who doesn't mind being loud and goes to clubs, which none of that is true for me. I'm, I'm, I'm quite quiet. I can be reserved. I don't need to talk all the time. I'm an introvert and I hate going to nightclubs. Um, so I was like, all right, am I doomed? <laughs> you know, is it just not going to work for me? Uh, and then I saw James's videos. I saw some other guys' videos. But it's like, no, you can be an introvert and you can do it during the day and you don't have to fucking dance with the girl or spin her around or make up some crazy story or nag her and be a bit of an asshole. You can just say, hello, excuse me. Uh, maybe pre-frame like, hey, this is maybe weird or, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you look great today. What's your name? And as simple as that sounds, girls will actually respond really nicely. And that was like, whoa, I can do that. <laughs> you know, like that sounds way more manageable for me. And that's why I was so drawn to that of like a dude who calls himself an introvert who still figured it out. Yeah, yeah exactly. When I stumbled upon that channel, I, I initially thought, um, why is not a pickup line, right? So I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> But I, I, I was really, um, I, I love the, the focus on the authenticity. And that's also a, a huge part um, of my message uh, about balance and authenticity, right? Um, and it's, it's kind of crazy that there's uh, so little platforms that, that uh, predicate that, um, exactly that message. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you're a full-on extrovert or introvert like, like you and me um it's uh you can develop your own style of game or pickup naturally without being a fucking asshole or uh applying these push pull mechanics and and i don't yeah. know man um so no i think it's i think it's awesome um were you already approaching before you started working with james um i tried but i couldn't like you know, I had a buddy and we pushed each other a little bit in, in Vienna, but you can count it on two hands, the amount of approaches I did before seriously yeah. being around uh, the team there, the dudes, the students. It's it's just a different environment when you're, as I mentioned before, like it gives you permission to finally really do it because uh, there's all those negative beliefs that men have. And I understand that as good as anyone because i've had those all these voices in your head of like you know you see a beautiful woman and you're like ah oh, she's busy ah oh, i'm annoying her ah oh, it's rude to interrupt her ah oh, sh she's rushing somewhere she would be late because of me that would be rude uh oh she would think i'm an idiot oh she would think i'm dangerous like this and 200 more of these excuses slash you know negative mindsets and it's really hard to overcome them by yourself yeah yeah absolutely i think the the, the biggest drive or, or at least biggest thing i guess that pushed me in that direction was uh, i absolutely uh detest and and hate when something um like an external pressure says that i shouldn't be able to express myself or that i shouldn't be able to do something while i know for a fact that pulling someone out of that um, automatic pilot, right? Everybody's with the earphones in, looking at the phone, yeah. 
And the only thing you're doing is you're pulling someone out of that and and create a moment, an experience that even if yeah. she has a boyfriend or even if she uh, is a little bit startled, uh, it's probably a moment that she'll remember the rest of the day and and gives gives her something. It gives you something and it gives her something. And I think the courage that's required for doing that to develop that is is an extremely masculine and noble thing. Mm. Um, and I think it's a, a simply a social net positive. Uh, the further we go down this whole social media um, digital path, I think the more valuable this becomes. And I find it very unfortunate that there's so many stigmas or or negative opinions around approaching uh, as if it's this thing that that is hindering people or almost almost like we're uh, estranged to to talking to each other. It's like, what I the know, fuck, man? Just absurd. use Tinder. Yeah, Just I use mean, Tinder and, and I Instagram. remember when it was still weird when you met your boyfriend or, or girlfriend on Tinder and now it's weird if you didn't almost like, mm -hmm. and that all happened in a couple of years. Exactly. Are, are you affected in any way by the, by these opinions or these, these forces? Like, do you sometimes get the, that comments about it, for example, uh, online or opinions. offline? Um, oh, yeah, basically the, these, yeah. Approaching. Yeah. Uh, sure um it's the minority most of the comments are quite positive uh also because of tnl and in general the type of guys we attract even like my fans are defending me in comments so i don't even have to comment on it or react to it which is very beautiful i'm very honored to you know have really strong fan base in that sense um i'm very empathetic to these comments i'm never getting angry at a hate comment uh, I always think, how can I help that person? Because there's nobody who, you know, it, it's the general rule on the internet. You only get hate from people who are below you, right? Like Absolutely. there's no guy who makes like more money than me or who has harder women than me or who, who approached more than me or has better social skills who's going to go on my YouTube channel and like put some hateful comment on me. It's always the guy who's like, sitting alone in an apartment, didn't get laid in years or months, uh, has this one high school crush and then some chat fucked her and he thinks the, this guy's an asshole and he's salty about it still after eight years. And then I, I don't know, maybe represent some of that trauma in the video and then he gets angry. I'm just like, oh man, like, you know, I, I hope this guy wakes up. I hope I could help him. I hope there's something I could write or say that makes him understand in what position he's in. And because I know, I truly believe every man can change his life to the better. So I'm just trying to think how can this guy understand that too? <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, and you're probably just a symbol of, of what he could be, right? So, um, if you're not they feel insecure so uh, that's always where the, the hate comes from uh yeah i resonate with that um do you um what has the role been of uh going through this approaching um you know sober during the day um in a very healthy way what has been the attribution of approaching to your growth uh personally uh, huge. I mean, it's, it has ripple effects in all areas of my life. Uh, I become more confident. I become, and you know, what does that mean? I'm just, I'm okay with myself is what I would describe as confidence. Like I, I'm, I'm me. I have my advantages. I have my shortcomings. I'm okay with both. I don't need to hide anything. I'm out there, right? I'm like, as in approaching, you're just kind of opening up your ego ready to be crushed over and over again and that's kind of a good practice um i i'm become a better negotiator a better communicator a better friend i would say um more fun and chill to be around with men and women um yeah and obviously it enables me to date some hot girls and then you know 
I'm, I don't want to give also the people the idea that that's the only way to meet women. Not at all. Like if dating apps work really well for you, sure, use them, right? I just don't know that many guys where it works really well for them because it's like most people know the pyramid now of just like it's 70%, 75% dudes on there. The girls only swipe, what is it, right or left, right? <laughs> uh, on like 4 to 5% of guys. Um, they have insane standards. So it's just like some guys look really good and then they get 90% of the girls. I'm just not one of them. <laughs> and so I had to find other ways. You can also have an amazing social circle, which I do a lot now. I create a lot of events. I bring people together. Um, so I'm meeting a lot of girls through that. There's different ways, but cold approach plus what happens after, you know, going on a date, doing texting, help me in all areas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I think you're making a good point, um, especially Tinder. I feel just uh, it's so unnatural, like the, the process as a, as a guy tries to basically seduce or persuade a woman he's interested in. It's like you get to only use one of your strengths. Yeah. Um, and that's your physical appearance. And that's just such a little part of what you get to uh, bring to an interaction. Um, I, I'm convinced that more than 80% is the energy you bring, the eye contact you can maintain, your body language, your simply the, the, the vibration you bring to an interaction. And you're excluding yourself from all of that. Yeah. and uh, really resort to only your physical appearance yeah. and i also think from the other side um women are forced to play a game or to look at men in a way that they're not used to so i just i just find it a really um yeah unhealthy place yeah that's a good uh, point you're basically relying on the sorry to interrupt you're relying on the one thing that you cannot do much about which is like your height your facial features if you have you know white cheekbones or not what color of your eyes you have and there's literally, especially as a man, there's like so many things that you can control and all of these you cannot communicate through Tinder. So it's kind of ridiculous. Like, yeah. And then yeah. the women, that, as you say, usually they, they love a man for his charm, for his presence, you know, for his masculinity, the way he talks, the way he makes her feel. And then now she's like, well, I don't know. I guess I just rate him on the beauty scale because that's, yeah, pretty ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's a, it's just a very crooked game. And um, personally, I um, I I quit all of that a while ago um, after really having kind of a realization, or just like I felt fucking empty, man. I was doing well on these Tinder uh, on these Tinder apps, and it just became this mechanical kind of routine. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just um, at some point I just felt so fucking empty even though i was uh i was doing okay with the app um and that's at that point i started thinking about it a lot and i, I think it's a very unhealthy place to be i mean i don't judge anyone who's using it um because there's always positive experiences that can can come out of it of course um but i would definitely urge men to to look at other means of of meeting women um how do you uh how do you value because you have cold approaching, you have uh, maybe drunk approaching, right? Going to bars, clubs. Um, you have Instagram now, which is maybe even bigger than Tinder, you could say, yeah. and comparable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How do you how do you value all of these systems? Uh, what do you like most? Um, so I think it's like a pyramid, and for me, the base is cold approach because you're gonna use approaching skills also in clubs, also in networking events, also at social events, obviously in a shifted way, you know, you want to be more calibrated there. So that's the base for me. Um, and then above that, for me, super important is social media. Um, often you have two or three minutes with a girl, you can charm her, you know, you can make a, an impression, a short one. Um, but the reality is also, especially if the girl is beautiful, desired, She's going to have a lot of guys, you know, try to make an, uh, an impression. So that's where a good social media profile comes in. Not to DM girls, not to like, you know, slide in someone's DMs, 
but to stay in touch with a person you met in real life. That's the big distinction. So I meet a sexy girl, whatever, at the bus stop or at a house party. And I add her. Maybe I'm super chill about it. I'm not like, well, you're so beautiful. Let's go on a date. I'm just like, hey, blah, blah, blah. We talk. We, we have a bit of a vibe. Just, hey, you're cool. What's your Instagram? Let's stay in touch. Bye. And then she starts following me. Cool. Now I'm basically, I'm running a marketing campaign. <laughs> and I'm the product. Exactly. Yeah. Right? On her phone. Like, I'm basically running ads on her phone for free. Yeah. It's your um, landing page, basically. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm like... I can remind herself of who I am. So I can show my humor. I can show my archetype, what kind of guy I am, what I'm thinking about, uh, if I read the news or not, if I'm vegan or not, if I'm working out or not, if I'm traveling or not, what friends I have, who do I show on my stories, you know? Um, so now I can paint the cool picture that I'm controlling uh, that I'm presenting to her and she's like oh yeah it's this kind of guy oh here he's again oh wow now he's in greece oh now he's doing this oh that's his job oh he has this passion oh cool he's around girls as well seems to be a cool guy so the next time i see her or after she continuously watches my stories or likes my posts or whatever i have permission to take it to the next level right versus just dming some chick now i'm again one in a thousand dudes who want to kind of get into her pants and she's not invested so um social media works really well for me huge tool I, I have a whole like webinar on that stuff i'm teaching guys how to improve that and then on top of that <laughs> going up the pyramid uh, if you then want to take it really to the next level uh is social circle game so because so far you can kind of do it alone all right, you can approach a girl by yourself in a park, go on a date with her, whatever. But then it kind of goes up the levels where you want to have collaborators. Um, you create events with, you bring people together. It can be a house party, it can be a drink in the park, it can be a short weekend trip, you know, where you explore a mountain or go hiking or do dance or go to the beach or whatever. Uh, and this is where looks wise i had the best success with getting the hottest girls because i'm able to create more investment on their side yeah yeah right so yeah i, I like the idea of instagram basically being a, a landing page and i'm personally i i'm hesitant to go further than that like um i don't personally enjoy social media as much um because there's this this side of um validation that's inherent to it kind of um do you manage to to basically leverage instagram and to not get lost in the consuming of it you know yeah. what i mean yeah that's a great point um i always say create don't consume so you can create it first of all you can create a profile relatively easy sure you need good photos and stuff but that can be taught you know I'm not saying post every day. I'm saying have 30 pics on your feed and then that's fine. Even I'm posting once every two or three months now. I'm like, I don't need to because my profile is cool. My landing page is basically done. It's like a website, right? You, you kind of design it once and then once a year you can update it. Um, fine. And then I'm posting a bunch of stories. The way I do it depends on your addiction level, which for me is pretty high. I have like two phones. So I got my like, fun phone and my focus phone that's how i call them and the focus phone is like the good one you know it's the newer iphone it has the better camera it's actually more better to use and that's where i only have the productivity apps the notes the messaging the project management my task list everything i need my my podcasts my my e my audiobooks and then i have the fun phone which stays at home which is a bit older a bit slower uh, i put it in the drawer I only get it out in the evening. This is where I have my Instagram app on. Um, and then I, that limits it a lot. Um, and then in general, if I'm in work mode, I'm not too drawn to it when I'm traveling a bit more because I have more time in planes and trains. Um, that works for me. You can also only use it on the desktop. But the main is like, you know, don't be a fucking consumer, be a creator. Yeah, 
I, I really like that actually. I mean, it's a very simple solution, but uh, for some reason, I never thought about it. It, it, I can imagine it keeps everything separate. And uh, yeah, I like yeah. that. Because I've tried, mm -hmm. people say, just deinstall the app. I'm like, well, then I just install it again. <laughs> it takes like 20 seconds. And then once you install it again, you, it just stays on your phone for a week. And then, you know, so having two phones is a better separation for me. Yeah, I'm actually going to follow up on that because I, I really, really like that idea. It's like right now with the noise and the, the focus is, is going through each other. And yeah. I cannot imagine that as a positive effect. Um, what I'm interested about is because you, you've sorted it out for yourself um, to, I think, maybe even the, the, the highest degree, right? You have your own models for it and, and you're probably teaching uh, men this as well. What is the what is the kind of uh, what is the why behind it? Uh, and then I'm pointing a little bit towards relationships and love, right? Because if you have this this huge, um, you have the landing page, you have very clearly the skills, right, to to get a date probably on the same day, um, just approaching, uh, and you have social circles that that bring it in a more natural way towards you. Um, but you're still choosing one girl or or is it uh, is it different for you like what is kind of the what is it pointing towards you mean what uh relationship dynamic i'm seeking in my life personally yeah yeah also that yeah yeah um different things in different times so there was a time in my life where i just wanted to have sex with as many girls as possible <laughs> you know and I just needed volume, 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 volume. Um, and I was fine at the time, right? It's just like, I want to gain experiences. I want to experience different girls, uh, you know, different countries, different flavors. And cool. That was that time. And then I wanted to have a girlfriend, but also maybe have threesomes or, you know, not have an open relationship, not getting locked in because I was still experimenting. Cool. That was that phase in my life. Then there was a phase where I was like, okay, I feel like I'm capped with the level of attractiveness I can get. And I wanted to move up. I was like, there's these beautiful model looking girls and I don't know how to get them. <laughs> and then I became obsessed mm -hmm. with that. So I was like, all right, how do they think? What do they do? Where do they go to? Who do they text? Where do they hang out? And I figured that out. And then kind of like this mental shift happens where you're like, you don't want to then sleep with girls below a certain thing anymore because it kind of fucks up your energy with the hot ones. I hope that doesn't sound too horrible, but you know, it's just like, <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. Um, it's just the reality of it. And um, yeah, that's just how it is. I could go more into detail. but And then I was like, all right, I'm tired of all of that. I want to have one girlfriend. And so I was in a, monogamous relationship for over a year um and i was fine you know even though i'm surrounded by hot girls i got my own bikini brand i'm creating events there uh i was monogamous for a year i was totally fine um obviously she was really fucking hot so that helped and interesting and challenged me in, in interesting ways so i'm not against anything you know uh and people have different phases in their life what i have to say though is don't become monogamous and get married if you just have no experience. Yeah, I, I think you make an interesting point with the uh, the volume phase. Yeah, it's this it's this uh, kind of weird thing that you're you're basically just running behind your dick and uh, trying to create a world map where you slept with every uh, or you ticked off every country yeah. in the world kind of thing. Collect the uh, flag. Try to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then people come in your room and they think you've you've traveled to all these countries, but actually, right? Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, it's it's this this phase that is kind of empty, uh, at least as I experienced it. At some point, you kind of realize like, okay, this is kind of done now. Um, yeah, but you still got to do it. But it's also it's necessary. Like, it's almost like having a job at 18, you know, like in a coffee shop where you're like, this sucks and the clients are angry or you work at a construction site and you're making like, I don't know, $8 an hour, but you still need that for later, right? It's still a base on that pyramid. So I don't regret it at all. 
it's an important time in my life where I, I figured out what I like, what I don't like. And every guy should go through that phase. They don't need to do it as extreme as I did, but a version of it. Yeah, that, that's the, the point I'm making. Yeah, I think it's necessary even. Um, and I think that's an, an interesting point about masculinity in general, that um, our energy basically it wants to go to all these extremes, right? And just to find out that that isn't it. So it's the same for money. It's the same for status, for, for all yeah. these things. We are so obsessed and so so naturally drawn to maxing it out, playing the, the game to the, to, the, to the end bus, right? Just yeah. to learn that there is on the other side nothing. Um, and, and we basically expand through that whole process and we do that over and over again. I think that's a very paradoxal but very beautiful side yeah. about masculinity. And, and um, it's, it's everything yeah. has its time. It's uh, because I see in my opinion, you know, I don't know, it's my opinion, but I see so many relationships fail because the man gets tired of his wife or long-term partner because there's always this like the grass is greener on the other side thing there's always this golden apple which is like the younger girl the sexier girl the more sexual girl the one who dances really hard right who seduces him because now he's he's more rich he's more established and he's fucking cheating on his wife um and then it's this horrible family drama every time and he's getting divorced and the children and who's getting the house and and I feel like all this could be avoided if he would just have his whole phase earlier, right? Figure it out, you know, sleep with a bunch of girls. I know for myself, when I get married, I will not cheat on my wife. Uh, when I get married, I will be committed because I know I did all the other things. I, 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 I've done it. I've done it all. I've seen it all. I know what it is. I got it out of my system. When I commit, I'm not going to commit to someone now, but when I do, I know it will be a commitment. And that's why I'm not committing now because I know I couldn't commit yet because I feel like there's still stuff I have to do and experience. And other guys, they're just so scarce, right? They don't have abundance. They don't have the experience. They latch on to one girl, one woman becomes their wife, and then they make more money. And then they sleep with the, I don't know, the, the nanny. And it's this whole drama. Yeah, and, and that question you or that uh, statement you just made about you are not ready to commit now um, because you have things to experience. That's a question that I, I think about a lot um, because, you know, this whole um, phase or this whole dynamic that you're describing of you get into a relationship and then you, you kind of get bored and the grass is greener. That's that's something that that very, very deeply resonates with me. Uh, and I wonder, and I wonder how that is for you personally. Do you think that that feeling of I need to experience more by myself? Do you think that ever goes away? Um, no. But I think the stakes will change. So I know a young woman will always be sexy, right? Fucking chick in her yoga pants. You know, like crop top, walking past. I'll always be like, damn, you know, just fucking it's in my genetics and I don't want to hide that. And literally, that's what I was. That's what my whole fucking machine of a body is designed to do is to like find young genes. Um, and I will think, OK, that's sexy. That's an objectively sexy body and healthy and young and OK, desirable on that level. But what would I lose if I would go after it? You know, right now, nothing. Because I'm a single man. I can do whatever fuck I want. Uh, when I'm fucking 52 and maybe I have two children and a wife, well, the stakes are high. And how much, do I, how much joy do I get out of being a good husband, being a good father, you know, seeing my children grow up, creating a good environment, having a healthy relationship that I worked on, a lot of joy. How much joy would I get out of banging another 23-year-old? You know, it's like, all right, a little bit, but not. it's not worth it. So I think that's the calculation you do. Um, and on that also, like, why am I not? It's not just I want to experience more. Why am I not ready to commit? It's just like, I don't know myself enough yet. Like, 
I think it takes for a man into your 30s and 40s, yeah, into your 40s easily to get to know yourself. And you need to do it through a lot of experiences, through a strong brotherhood, through people who call you out on your bullshit, through therapy, through trauma resolution, maybe through plant medicine, um, to actually know who am I, what do I want, and then you can start forming a healthy relationship. And I still can't. <laughs> it's, I'm honest. Like I'm not there yet to even have a healthy relationship. And I think that's where guys get lost. Uh, they, they focus so much on the pussy and not on healing themselves, working on themselves, thinking long-term, right? It's like, it's just another dopamine addiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, you're basically describing the, the theory uh, that I have as well. Although I think it's a, it's a growing question. I think that question for um, men always kind of is there. When am I, when am I ready to settle down? and be become a more based and grounded version of myself um and that then has effects on everything you're doing right but yeah i think it's something very interesting and i really wonder um as we keep growing right i think that's also a factor uh for, for men we just keep uh growing not just in in value but um the more we understand about ourselves the 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 more we develop our status our financial situation etc uh, we just keep growing. And I think that growth also makes it continually interesting to keep, oh, now I can maybe yeah. get a better girl that now fits my standard. Yeah. And I think that's a temptation that just stays there. And I I'm coming to terms with the belief that uh, it might be a part of, of masculinity to, to be in control of that urge and to some point decide and say, this is the woman I'm going to build a family with. And it's time to to change from this exploring lover to a more based version of myself. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and again, it comes back to what do you want and how do you know what you want? Well, you need to really know yourself because if you ask people what do they want, most people say rich, famous. I'm like, really? Like, have you thought about that? Have you actually yeah. thought through what it means to be super famous or super rich? Like, could you handle that? Probably not, right? They just they just repeat other people's dreams. Um, they never self reflect, and that's a big problem. Um, some dudes I know they they can pull off both. I mean, I have friends and business partners, and they have a wife, they have children, and they have an open relationship with them. Or, you know, they they had a phase of creating children with that woman, and now it's more like a friend relationship. But the the children are being raised, and they go back to sleeping with young girls. So. I'm not saying there's only one solution to that. If you can pull it off, you can do kind of, if you know, if you can pull it off and if you don't hurt people in the process and you want to live your truest truth and you can afford it to have several women and maybe several children with several women and nobody gets traumatized, go for it. But, you know, it's expensive. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's fully customizable. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of knowing yourself, do you know what, what you want to be? or become no uh currently i know what i want right i want to live every day as let's say effective as possible and i don't mean only work 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 that can only mean also mean have fun in an effective way right like uh i can have fun on instagram for an hour but i can have way more fun i don't know talking to a friend having a meaningful conversation for an hour or jumping in the water and playing at the beach for an hour with, with some chicks. Um, so being effective in that sense, to getting most out of life, building a strong community, uh, I think is going to pay off long, long term, getting my face out there, even though I, I don't really want to be famous. Like, I don't care. As I said, I'm an introvert. I'm not like comfortable, comfortable being that guy, but the benefits outweigh you know, the disadvantages of like having a strong brand, especially creating a, a community of people, right? Um, so that's what I'm doing. And obviously making money along the way because I need to be eventually financially independent. It's it's important as a man. So. Yeah, yeah, cool. Let's switch the topic uh, for a second. Um, 
I'm very interested about does your algorithm, for example, also show all this um, red pill content? And are you aware of like this this fear that is currently like fucking booming, man? Um, like, what's your what's your take on this? You mean all the red pill content, the fresh and fit, the Andrew Tate, the the yeah the yeah yeah, like yeah, that? yeah exactly. Yeah. Sure, I mean you cannot avoid it, right? If you watch one of the videos, the algorithm gives you more and more and you, you are watching because it's exciting to watch because it's it just hits the human fucking, you know, it pushes our buttons in a way that we cannot avoid it. Like, you know, there's like fucking four girls lined up and they all look hot and they talk about sucking dick and you're yeah. outraged, but you also kind of, oh, but she, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, she, for she's, oh. It's just like, they just play so well on the outrage, on the triggering and you can't look away cool that's one thing um and that's how to get views how to get money but i think it's important to understand that this is just such a sh small small minority of people that are taking up so much space online now right like most girls are not strippers in miami like the, the amount of the percentage of women globally who are strippers or and OnlyFans girls in Miami is very low, <laughs> you know, or the amount of dudes who make, you know, five million a year and wear Patek Philippe's and Rolexes and go to the club and buy champagne and drive a Bugatti, a Ferrari is very small. You know, it's just like that's a bunch of dudes and it's good for them and they can do whatever they want and it's all fun. But the most people still live in the real world where just normal dudes meet normal girls and they can have fun together and they can figure it out. And if we, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's getting a bit too much because people are trying to take on these opinions when it just doesn't fit their lifestyle. Exactly, exactly. I feel like it's looking uh, towards the theater, right? Like uh you're yeah. nailing it it's it's such a small minority Bo both sides they they manage to i don't know like if there's a platform where you can find these women uh so easily but it's like this very uh tiny yeah. category like a of modern like uh, Greek they're doing all these spices where the people are just killing each other in the middle and we're just like ah and everybody has their exactly opinions. it's yeah theater and uh for some reason they find exactly the women that cannot even argue any points and they're just sitting there confirming their um yeah wrongful theories about how women and men should behave um and yeah i'm, I'm glad that you can look at it as a theater and it's kind of like oh entertaining but then you move on with your life but i don't think a lot of men can do that or i think a lot of men get stuck in in these messages and that it's educating men um to, to become these these like uh, alibaba versions of andrew tate and they 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 look at a few videos and then they approach their girlfriend like uh, today you're gonna do the dishes or so, trying to create this this very forced dynamic switch of like yeah. i am now the the masculine leader but it, it doesn't fit your life it doesn't fit who you are at that point and it completely sidetracks the, the whole authentic uh, uh, subject, right? Totally. Yeah. I mean, again, right? Like Andrew Tate can talk like Andrew Tate because he's Andrew Tate. And he can pull it off, first of all, because he has insane financial resources. But on the other hand, you don't know how the guy is in private. He might be a different person. He might actually treat his women completely different than he says he does. Uh, he might have totally upset you know very special girls in his life by the way he talked to them and maybe he really regrets it and maybe they left him and maybe the, the ones he really wanted fucked off like there's all these considerations that i don't know the answer to and nobody does but what he clearly did figure out is if you talk in a certain way online you will get a lot of views and the views will turn into sales and that's great for him right like i respect him for being a marketing genius, but yeah, just take everything with a grain of salt. And then the problem is the ratio of consuming content versus living in the real world, right? People might watch 20 hours of content and then talk to a girl for one minute a week, you know, like they might every day from 8 PM to midnight, they consume YouTube 
And then what are they going to do? What are they doing with all that new dating knowledge? They fucking don't mm -hmm. approach women. They don't get Tinder matches. Then they go to the club, talk to a girl for 90 seconds. Then she has some reaction and he's like, proof. I'm like, it's true. A bitch. <laughs> like, ah. And she's like, okay, exactly. if you consume one hour of content and then you approach 40 women and test your theories and get feedback from the real world, more power to you, but nobody's doing that. Yeah, exactly, exactly this point. It's it's creating it's creating your reality by, by looking at it so much and really consuming it, you simply will make it your reality. And the the thing that I keep preaching is that. And I don't know how this is in your life, but I don't meet these women. I don't meet these women that are fucking on OnlyFans that that are fucking rude. Um, uh, have the, all these toxic traits that this Red Bull movement seems to object, or at least the way they frame it. I believe so much that just what you consume and what you choose to believe in, that's going to become your reality. So. If you if you're gonna think every every woman is uh, is doing OnlyFans or has uh, 15 sugar daddies and and, and whatnot, uh, yeah, I mean that's probably the the women that you're gonna attract uh, yeah. or approach by yourself. And yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, like what kind of woman are women are you meeting in your uh, in well? Your that's life? interesting because I do know a shit ton of OnlyFans girls. Uh, yeah. I I lived in Ukraine for a while and, you know, my friend circle is quite sexual by design because it's fun. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of OnlyFans girls. I know even webcam models. Uh, and I know these girls and they're just normal chicks. <laughs> like, it's just their job. I also know girls who use men for money. I also know girls who are OnlyFans girls but are in a monogamous relationship. I also know girls who, you know, I don't know, 30 different flavors of girls. And it's just like, I also know a girl who treats this guy with the utmost respect and would never raise her voice and does whatever he says and is very respectful and then walks out the door, meets the other guy and treats him like a piece of shit. So, you know, it's also like, if these dudes always complain about women being a certain way, it's like, what are you trying to get to do? Like, okay, then don't hang out with them or like it's it almost like this boyish of like well oh, but she was mean or look or it's like okay then find someone else so like man up or i don't know so but at the yeah. end of the day what i've experienced um uh, if you have integrity as a man and you know you you do display a certain level of power and masculinity uh and you you expect these women to treat you with that then they will like if you set a strong frame they commit to it and if they don't you can always walk away <laughs> absolutely that's the the voice i'm hearing too it's just um all the the men in the, in the comments but even even uh these the hosts of fresh and fit they are just um presenting themselves better and they are the leaders of this huge platform but i hear the exact same noise which is me 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 and like pointing uh pointing fingers yeah. to the other side and it's like and it's okay like, you're making you know, some oh, points but you seem frustrated as hell you know oh, girls girls suck money out of the guy's pocket i'm like okay the guy still gave it to them <laughs> it was still the guy's <laughs> yeah. decision to spend the money to buy the watch yeah. to 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 yeah. invite her on the yacht it's like okay bro like it's still the man's fault for doing it and if you don't want it, then don't do it. And it's like, mm -hmm. let's be honest. If you and me would be a 21-year-old fucking hottie and the world does everything we, we tell it to and we can manifest hundreds of thousands of dollars by shaking our ass a little bit, hell yeah, I would instantly do that. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I would be stupid not to. I can fucking secure the bag at the peak of my beauty by doing a little bit of that and controlling the world and building strong networks like this and then fucking check out. Amazing. I would do it. I don't judge these girls at all. <laughs> yeah. Whether or whether you do that or not, um, the, the basis of that is that you cannot point your finger because especially those men that are so vocal and, and online, 
they are following women on Instagram that they don't know. They're liking yeah. their pictures. They're watching porn. They're watching these thirst traps. All of that shit. And so what you're, zero you're doing is fans. you're creating the, the yeah exactly, yeah. and you're creating the demand that pulls in the supply. So if if men would start valuing, I don't know, like traditional values and pictures on Instagram of women cooking or cleaning would would get would blow up and go viral. I don't know. And bikini pictures would gain zero traction. Guess what would happen? Then yeah. the whole system would change and women would find rewards in what's being rewarded. So it, it's just this this whole red pill sound is is uh, pointing fingers while they should be pointing fingers at other men. Uh, I think it's time yeah. to take responsibility. Uh, so basically games. in every narrative. So games. Yeah. Uh, I think every narrative in the world, um, men men create that narrative and lead that narrative, um, and that goes the same for the the systems that we're pointing fingers at here. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, it's not a great progression, but uh, all I can do is share my view. Like I just made a video on the topic of her sexual past, right? Like how to deal with when. You know, we all talk about, oh, a woman is a horrible person when she has a body count over three. I'm like, really? Like, I'm, I talk about this stuff on my channel a lot uh, to, to give another view, to, to step back a bit, take the emotions out a bit. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm. Do you value it? Uh, with women that are more reserved with their sexuality? Depends what I want to do with her, right? It's just like, uh, okay. probably one day as my wife, yeah. Do I want her to be a virgin? Absolutely not. Because I also want her to know what she wants, right? Like she should have done some soul searching and then choose me out of that, not because I overpowered her. Um, but if every girl should have a body count of one, well, then nobody's going to fuck me. <laughs> uh, and then I cannot make experiences. So I want girls who love their sexuality, who are sexually open, who like to experiment because then I can experiment with them. I can, you know, have a little romance. I can be their lover a little bit. Um, you know, it's there's a lot of ego games. Um, most of it is insecurity, I believe. And the man can just not handle it because he's just not okay with himself and he feels so threatened of all the other dudes. Um, so, yeah, there's no black and white answer, I think. No, absolutely not. I think that's the that's the only thing you can end on. There, there's just preferences, man, and and some men have a very strong preference, and this is not something to be judged. I think the only requirement, if you're making a, a such preference, you should be in a position that you can demand anything to begin with. So I think you should have built yourself up to what you could have been as a man. And yep. then you can start making your your preferences uh, a little bit hurt in a loving way, but never in this. Uh, here's my my uh, six rules. If you don't check out on, on any of those, uh, you can fuck off. Um, you know, people are are so wildly complex and different that um, I, I find it so unfortunate that if if a woman or a man is uh, showing some kind of behavior that it puts you in the category of you're the only fans rude ass uh yeah whatever right this this girl that red pill is, is pointing towards but uh yeah it's, it's very important to 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 not forget that the, the world isn't black and white and we can never categorize anyone for that matter i think yeah. the the only true concept that i think would solve so many problems if most people would be aware of it is that um masculine energy and feminine energy is what we should be talking about and men and women is what we are currently talking about so mm -hmm. we have men that have a more feminine essence and it's absolutely fucking fine i have uh, two great friends of mine a couple uh the man is extremely feminine and she is very masculine and they are are it works like magic um it's a polarized relationship where the energy is just different and we are currently having this whole debate, whether it's feminism or red pill or basically all the conversations about the booming topic of masculinity and femininity. Um, we're talking about men and women. And we cannot generalize men and women because yeah. about 80% of men have a more masculine essence and the 20% that's left 
are more feminine or neutral. So you can never, um, you, you have to look at it like a scale rather than a black and white. You're a man, you're a woman, you should be doing this. And if you're not, you're uh, not valuable. For, yeah, for absolutely. That and every, everything. And again, it comes back to knowing yourself. It comes back to probably doing therapy, knowing your traumas, understanding your own patterns, you know, that everybody has a lot of blind spots. Um, and it's every man's and woman's duty to find these blind spots as, as much as possible to operate in a healthy way in society and ultimately be happy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, I'd like to, uh, to slowly, uh, close on a, on a topic that's been, uh, growing for me personally in my life. Yeah. Uh, and coincidentally, I saw that you're also releasing content on this. It is quite interesting to me, um, which is, uh, monk mode. Mm -hmm. um and potentially the addition of semen retention to that uh let me start off by asking are you aware of semen retention do you use yeah, it in sure. your life or what do you yeah i'm aware of it uh obviously no the no fab movement um i don't know if semen retention and no fab is interchangeable or not um, kind of yeah 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 um well my take on it i think Again, people taking it to the extreme. So jizzing three times a day, obviously fucking horrible, right? <laughs> like uh, it doesn't take a scientist to know that if you constantly come and put your energy in the tissue instead of something productive, that you just not operate as a man as good as others, right? Um, and me personally, I trained my PC muscle to a level that I can have an orgasm without ejaculating um which i think is helpful um i don't come every time i have sex even i definitely don't come when i jerk off but i do jerk off here and there so i'm not the guy who's like 189 days you know <laughs> oh my god i broke my streak oh no i i what is it called relapsed oh starting from zero i'm such a piece of shit you know i'm just like I think talking down on yourself like that when you masturbate is really bad. I think it creates negative thought patterns. It puts pressure on you that you don't have to because, you know, life is stressful enough. Um, so I would create a healthy relationship with your body. Ideally, have women in your life that you can have sex with. And then if you have sex and you jizz, fine, right? I mean, it's kind of what our body is here to do. Obviously, don't come inside her without a condom or even with a condom. Just don't come inside her, um, except you want to make a baby. Um, and if you're by yourself and you're fucking horny and you can't think about anything else anymore and you already worked out, fucking go in your room, light a candle, put on some nice music, put like red, red lighting, touch your body, basically seduce yourself. Don't sit at your desk, you know, grip your dick really hard. And then try, can you get to almost ejaculation and then relax again? Basically simulate sex, right? Instead of jerking off in 30 seconds or two minutes on, on, a, on your desk, simulate how it would be having sex with women and then jizz. So I don't know, it's a bit of a long answer, but again, the extremes are, uh, I don't think, not, not healthy. Yeah, yeah, no, you, <laughs> I know. I agree with every word you just said. I mean, um, it might come sections I, I see a lot of men that are on these very extreme streaks you know like uh i mean most of it is probably bullshit as well right i'm on seven years currently going strong yeah whatever but um i've i always wonder why man <laughs> why yeah like, you're you're a man that that needs uh, to a certain extent affection love connection um sex it's a beautiful thing that is also empowering just like semen retention is empowering and yeah i i just don't, don't understand why you would um uh go to such an extent um I, I guess it's again the 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 masculine right obsession that can happen of like i found this thing now that's me I, i'm gonna gonna go to the fucking extent and and yeah, like high competition score and, i can track it and i'll, I'll be the, on the leaderboard yeah, yeah. and like okay now you're exactly. again playing another computer game that's not the real world right yeah, I'll tell you something. There's a there's an app even for it. 
that uh, these men are like comparing and there's like titles attached to the to the yeah, scores. Exactly. So there you go. Yeah. It is it's, already um, a video game. I read the book, uh, The Status Game this year. It was one of the best books I've read ever. It basically explains everything we do is to get status. And then, you know, no fab, they say it's for my health. And, but again, then it's for status because you just want to have a high score. Um, and it's again, know yourself. I mean, I know guys when they jizz once, they're fucking tired for two days. And then they just train themselves to only jizz once a month when they really want to come with the girl. And I know guys, they can come two times a day and it doesn't affect them at all. And then fine, right? Like, you know, I'm ser- sometimes through my bikini brand, we create events and I'm around like 18 girls the whole week. And especially last time I had sex with my girlfriend like three times a day during that trip. And I just like twice a day for a whole week. And it didn't affect my energy levels at all. I was fucking awake. I was sharp. I was focused because I was surrounded by the ocean, by the air, by a lot of women, good food. You know, it was amazing. So many metrics. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's different for everyone, man. And the status game you said, that's the, what's the book is called? Yeah, the status game by, let me check. Uh, Will Store, S-T-O-R-R. Okay, I'm going to check that out. Amazing. Yeah, yeah no, that's that's what it uh, has become for a lot of men, I think. Uh, um, the, why I preach or preach, uh, why I support seam retention and use it myself, it's in a very balanced way. I'd say if I have a, a jiu-jitsu tournament or a fight coming up, then... I'll just leverage it to to fucking boost that primal energy that I do feel. Um, yeah. If I uh, don't see my my girl for a few weeks, yeah, I'm gonna retain, and because why not? Uh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna see her, and then I let it go for free, man. And um, I'll I won't orgasm every time, just like you uh, you mentioned. Um, for everybody who's watching, I'm making a video on that as well on how you can control your uh, orgasms and eventually even have orgasms just in your body. Um, I think uh, that's a very interesting route to go uh, if you yeah. want to master that game. Um, but yeah, man, it's uh, <laughs> understand yourself and, and see what works for you and, and definitely don't get caught up in the status game of, uh, yeah, and don't, let, don't download these apps and try to become a level 50 night watcher because you're uh you're on a 50 uh, day streak um, yeah i do think in in uh, connection to monk mode it is uh very interesting mm-hmm. um because i think for me at least how i design design my monk modes it's uh yeah kind of like a, a detox in many ways um and i think seam retention works like magic with that uh yeah. not seeing women for a while um yeah so also not masturbating watching porn for a while um can you tell me a little bit about how you design it what, what are kind of like the pillars of your uh yeah mode sure mode? just quickly on nofab also i want to add when i work with students uh in my workshops one-on-one where we approach women i tell them don't jerk off this week at all so it definitely fucking helps uh that hunger, that intent, that focus to talking to girls on the street. I'm like, don't jerk off. Put that fucking energy into another woman's eyes and, and seduce her. So that is a rule when I work with guys. Um, Absolutely. So monk mode, I fucking love it. I was, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good friends with Iman Gaji, who, you know, is talking about monk mode a lot. And I was spending a month with him in Cape Town uh last year yeah last year and kind of observed him working how he does it you know he's he's obviously a super high level operator super interesting guy super nice guy only good things to say about him and that inspired me to create my own version of that so what i did is i rented a villa and invited my team and other dudes to split the costs and spend a whole month it was actually six weeks um together in a boring ass town no women, no attractions, no nightclubs, no bars, and but luxurious environment, right? Big rooms, 
fucking one room to have Zoom meetings, um, a pool, a sauna. And that basically meant then getting up early, getting a coffee, working, going to the gym, working, having lunch or dinner, working, having presentations in the evening where we share ideas and, and thoughts and just doing that for six weeks straight. So like cutting out all the distractions, no grocery shopping, no laundry, because we had a cleaner, no going to the post office, no, you know, catching a train, no, uh, oh, the, the co-working place is closed today. Uh, none of that shit. So, re and obviously no girls, no sex, no female visitors, even no distractions. Um, that worked really well. Um, you know, one metric is I did like six YouTube videos in six months prior, and I did like 36 videos in that one month. So it's pretty insane outcome. Uh, I finished two sales funnels. I finished more YouTube stuff. Um, yeah. So in my experience, monk mode works at a maximum of five to six weeks. Then it becomes too exhausting if you do it right. So if I hear people say, oh, I've been in monk mode for six months, I'm like, no, you haven't. <laughs> like, you're not in monk mode. <laughs> uh, you're just living yeah. your normal boring life, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice. What, what I'm hearing in your answer is, um, like, you're, so you're cutting out the resistance, which is a very pleasant thing, and it's a very positive thing, uh, right? You don't have to clean. You don't have to fucking get a subscription on the co-working place, all that shit. Yeah, uh, and on the other side, you're you're cutting out the dopamine as well, so that everything that is left is basically you and the work and a sort of yeah. like a brotherly communion to do it with, which is a huge part. Like I could never do this alone. By the way, like me alone in an apartment trying to pull up the same thing, I would fail miserably. Maybe that's just me, but I don't think it's just me. Having the other dudes there, going to the gym with you just sitting at the same big desk working on their own businesses, right? Just makes you go work. Like you're not going to fucking swipe on, on Instagram next to four guys who are just, I don't know, writing sales copy or doing their thing. You know, you just would feel horrible. <laughs> like you would not do it. So you're almost outsourcing your accountability, right? You don't have yeah. to keep yourself accountable because through that dynamic of, everybody being in the same house the accountability kind of gets like canceled out and it's everybody does it for each other without even needing to do much and then you know if you fucking slack off for a day or you see one guy i don't know gets up at 10 or 11 that day you're like hey what's up he's like oh, i was on my phone till two in the morning i'm like okay you know tomorrow put your phone on the desk uh, i'll make sure it happens and that's it we're not like you bad boy it's just like hey how can i help you um so that dynamic is incredible and I love it. And my life is obviously extra chaotic compared to most people. Like I do like four or five months of coaching a year. I do like three months of insane luxury trips for my bikini brand per year. So I need to base myself. It's super important. Otherwise I'm totally in chaos. So I decided to do like two or three a year, five weeks each, where I'm now inviting other entrepreneurs in. They pay to join and it's, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, you really inspired me on this one because my monk modes, um, look exactly the same, uh, except that I'm doing it by myself. So yeah. I am kind of drawn to the ID, but also kind of done with that right now. Um, I really enjoyed the, um, struggle with my own emotions as I've been a, a man who has always been uh, around people, around friends, um, never really a moment alone, although I did enjoy that. And so I, I started doing these monk modes and I started seeing a side of myself that I hadn't seen in a very long time, which mm -hmm. is a side that feels lonely. I was like, aha, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, these emotions um, are sort of new to me, or at least in this phase of my life. And I, when I got through that, um, I don't know, it just felt like every hour that I had was like two hours uh, in every day. And I'm sure that's similar for you as you're just yeah. only left with your work to begin with. 
but I do enjoy um, from my side to you, I would, I would definitely promote a little bit the idea of um, uh, that loneliness and, and lo being in that silence that yeah. it also has a, has a very nice payout. And then with that, I'm already telling you that, uh, that the way you set it up appeals now more to me because it's like, okay, I've kind of done that now. Um, it really, really inspires me to do that together with maybe people from my own community. Uh, and seeing you do that um, has really inspired me to start working on it myself. Uh, because I, I think it's just amazing, man. It fits yeah. with all these these boxes that I that I envision my life to be. It has this masculine communion to it, uh, meeting new people, um, working on it, working on different projects, different parts together and sharing the wins and losses. I don't, I just oh, think man. it's amazing. It's literally man. like I the feel... happiest time in my year. Like my girlfriend was so pissed at me because I was like, you know, like I love my girlfriend. We have good time. And I'm still like, oh my God, three days until monk mode. I'm like so excited. <laughs> it's just like, I'm like, I can't wait to not see you for five weeks, you know? And I'm like, it's not against you, but it's just so good. You're just with your boys. You work, because yeah. basically what is it? You work only on your mission. You do nothing else, right? Um, and as a man, it feels incredible. And I agree, definitely um, periods of loneliness, super important. I would say maybe like, it doesn't have to be five weeks, but I think to fucking live in a hut in the woods or whatever, for five, six, seven days, bring a lot of pen and paper, bring some books, bring some inspiration is incredibly important to set goals and to figure out what you actually want and what you don't want and be honest to yourself. And then you can write that out and then can put that clarity into the monk mode where you then just grind. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And that way um, you're really planning a year like optimized for your own happiness health success yeah. right you have these little periods of yeah uh, silence basically you're doing these uh, monk modes together with man you're having these amazing luxury trips you're literally just planning the dream life man and it's really a, mm. um i think it's such an awesome characteristic of the path we uh ended up choosing um of course there's a lot of things that i think a lot of people don't understand you know they just see the lifestyle or maybe through social media uh and they don't really see all the shit that happens behind that oh, yeah. <laughs> uh and kind of like the more cringy and more mundane shit that happens as well but um i can only say i'm very grateful to to be in this position i, I think uh you definitely uh, um are too um i i would go for uh i would i have a lot more questions about this but i think maybe that's topic for a another conversation yeah we're gonna make um, a part two no problem anytime yeah yeah i'm definitely excited for that and um yeah man who knows maybe i'll uh, end up joining the next monk mode uh as well because uh, absolutely uh, next one is in november it's nice, uh november you say do you already have yeah. an idea of where and uh uh turkey we got a seven bedroom luxury villa three floors with pool sauna big living room space for meetings space for everything we got the best internet in town i made sure they, they actually literally dicked a line just for us for the street because right. i was like i want faster internet um and i already have two guys who pay the deposit so I can't wait. It's it's still so long. I'm like, fuck. So maybe I'm trying because, yeah, summer is just very busy for me um, through coaching and events. So I'm doing like little monk modes, but not the real one. Like here, three weeks with my business partner in, in, a, in an apartment, but it's more chill. Like the one in November, it's like, it's going to be like, bam, bam. It's like, you know, fitness yeah, yeah, six yeah. times a week uh, and just a lot of work and good food. Yeah, it's awesome. the The way you're uh, uh, describing is is exactly how I feel it would be. So I'm kind of seeing already. Uh, it's a nice confirmation to see that it is in fact a, a very beautiful experience. So uh, good to hear there's some spots open. I'm uh, I'm gonna get back to you on that one. 
Um, but uh, at this point, for for our first little chat here, uh, anything you still want to share or uh, tell um, my viewers? No, I mean thanks for watching it that far. How how long we've been chatting for? Like almost ninety minutes, I guess. Um, so who's still watching? Thank you. <laughs> uh, if you want to know more about everything I talked about, just check out my channel or follow me on Instagram. And feel free to say hello in the Instagram DMs. I'm reading. Currently, it's still manageable to reading all the, the messages. Yeah, say hi. Awesome, man. I'll link your uh, socials in the description and uh, they uh, can go check your profiles out. Thank you for listening, guys. And uh, Perfect. see you in the next Thanks one. Thanks for having me.